Today I'm going to do a bit of a performance check on this Marantz Model 2015 uh, receiver, which I've recently done some restoration work on. Um, it's got an FM radio, AM radio and an amplifier all built in. It's rated at 15 watts per channel uh, and uh, according to the spec sheet it should be 0.9% distortion at that uh, power output. So first I'm going to check what the power output actually is and see if it's working up to spec uh, and then I'm going to measure the distortion uh, at its rated output and uh, what we can uh, push out of it at maximum. Uh, just to explain the setup here, uh, here's the receiver that's under test. Um, over here I've got a Hewlett Packard 334A distortion analyzer. Uh, it's not exactly the newest model uh, but it gives good results down to about 0.1% or less. Uh, as a scope here for detecting clipping, looking at the output and also so we can see the residual from the distortion analyzer. Out of shot over here to the right is the signal generator I'm using. It's a Hewlett Packard 3325B, not the lowest distortion in the world, but good enough for this. Uh, I'm going to use a one kilohertz tone uh, for that. Now, first of all, here's the receiver in action. I've just got a simple radio aerial hooked up to it. If I turn the volume up, you should be able to see on the scope there, we have, uh, there's obviously audio there. I think it's a talk radio station. And you can see the uh, voltmeter on the distortion analyzer bouncing around in sympathy. So first of all, let's see if we can get a measurement of the output power. Uh, I've got an 8 ohm load resistor hooked up to the uh, remote speaker output on the um, receiver here. The main output is connected to the scope and distortion analyzer. It's nice that it has two sets of speaker outputs, gives us a few more choices. I'm just measuring the left hand channel for now. I can't be bothered to rewire everything with the right hand channel, but uh, it should work the same. So the signal generator is connected to the AUX input, so we'll turn that over there. You notice the little dial pointer light goes out, which is a nice touch from Marantz. So we'll turn the volume up and we should see there we have a uh, waveform there. Let's just change the time base so we can see it more clearly. Uh, so this is the output driving into 8 ohms and this is measuring the output voltage at the moment. So if I turn that up, uh, I might have to change this a bit so we can see the edges of the, edge the waveform. You can see we've just got clipping starting there at the bottom there. I hope that's clear under the room light. So if I back that off so it's just not clipping. Check the top isn't clipping on. That's good. That's a nice, looks like a mostly nice clean sine wave. Here we've got an output voltage of 13.3 or thereabouts volts. So it's, yeah, on there. It's about 13.5 volts RMS. Yeah, or average actually on that meter, but that's near enough. So using Ohm's law, 13.5 squared into 8 ohms uh, is 22.8 watts. So it's comfortably exceeding its uh, rated power output. So well, that's a good start. So let's adjust things for 15 watts output. So that should be 15 times 8. This is the manufacturer's uh, square root. So it should be just about 11 volts uh, for 15 watts output. So we'll adjust the level of the volume control there. So it's just under 11 volts. That's correct. There's our nice clean output waveform. Now let's measure the distortion. So this has been on voltmeter mode. First we set the reference level. Uh, and that's uh, showing uh, not much, so we put it on set level. Right now we have to adjust the uh, vernier here for a level of 0 dB on the meter. So adjust that, that's our reference, and then we keep everything constant from now on. There we go, that's set to 0 dB. Now to measure the distortion, we click to distortion mode, and we use the balance control here and the frequency adjustment to null out the one kilohertz signal, leaving only the distortion, hopefully, which we can then measure. Uh, now, uh, this can be a bit of a fine art. So uh, this is already fairly well balanced, actually, because I've been playing with this earlier on. But you can see, as I move the frequency, it drops down a bit. So we make it a bit more sensitive, like that. And we can play with this and get the minimum we're reading. We're trying to get the minimum possible reading. It gets very, very sensitive. We can adjust the bridge balance there. It's already very low. So down, we're already down on the 1% range, uh, down the 0.3% range. At this point it gets very, very hard to balance it manually. So we can put it into automatic mode and it will um, balance the bridge internally itself. Uh, so this is on the 0.3% distortion scale. If we take it all the way down to the 0.1% scale, what do we get? There we go. On the 0.1% scale we're reading about 0.65. 
0.065% uh, distortion, uh, which is very, very low indeed. Uh, that's probably the, that's actually the distortion of the um, signal generator itself. I've measured that independently. Now, the manufacturer's rating is 0.9%. So we're much, much lower than the manufacturer's rating. Just of interest, we can take the 8 ohm load off and see if that makes a difference. So disconnect the 8 ohm load. Right, actually slightly increases, if anything, to about 0.07%. Put it back in. So, um, yeah, that uh, amplifier is way exceeding its manufacturer's spec. It's more than 10 times better, at least. Let's just see what the distortion is when we push it to maximum output power. So for that, we'll return to... Uh, set level mode, which is a new reference. We need to increase the output power, of course, to the new level, just short of clipping. So we'll turn that up to about there. It's just starting to clip. Let's back it off a bit. There we go. It's just not clipping. So that's about 22 watts, as we discovered. And let's adjust the reference level to zero again on the scale. There we go. Spot on. Now we'll get into distortion measuring and we'll go through the uh, nulling process again. Oops, that's long automatic mode when it doesn't work. So that's, it should still be pretty well nulled. There we go. It's quite low already. Let's see if we can get it any better. It's, ooh, it's very, very sensitive, this. Into automatic. There we go. There we go. It's way down. That's 0.3. Now we're on the point one percent scale. Oh, there we go. It's just found it. 0.1% distortion at 22 watts output. So again, much, much lower than the manufacturer's spec um, and uh, really quite healthy. Again, let's try disconnecting the load, see if that makes a difference. Okay, in this case, when we're really pushing the amplifier hard, the distortion actually goes down somewhat when we take the load off, which is to be expected because it's not working as hard. So 0.07% yeah, distortion or thereabouts, put the load back on, distortion heads back up to about 0.1%, which is uh, excellent and uh, much better than the specification. It's also interesting to look at the residual from the distortion filter. If we press that, this second waveform on the scope here, this messy one, it's set to a much higher sensitivity than the um, main waveform. That's actually what's left after the filter has filtered everything out. So you can see that that is the distortion that the amplifier is producing. And if I just increase the volume a bit, um, let's just sort of put that on a less sensitive range. Increase the, the volume a bit, you can see clipping start to happen. You can see the distortion products, which are very low there, they start to increase dramatically suddenly. And you can see the distortion meter rising rapidly as well. Uh, so that is the actual view of the distortion the amplifier is producing. But overall, it's uh, well in excess of its specification, working very well. So uh, I'm happy with the results of that test.